If you have tens of thousands of transactions to get through, if you've got multiple exchanges, multiple wallets, if you've bought and sold NFTs like myself, if you have used DAOs, decentralized finance protocols, DEXs, if you have all these transactions to get through, to get your tax done, I feel you, I understand you. And this is why I, I'm creating a tutorial step-by-step -step video on crypto tax calculator. Because personally for me, they have been the best software system to get my tax done. I am not paid by Crypto Tax Calculator. They've not reached out to me, you know, and told me to make a video. Like this is me giving my personal experience of what's worked for me in getting my tax done. And let me tell you, I've spoken to so many accountants and how the tax uh, system is trying to work with cryptocurrency. And let me tell you, cryptocurrency is just so ahead and it's moving so fast that the tax department's systems, like they're taking time to catch up. So trying to get everything done, it can be really, really, really tedious. Now I actually made a video comparing different crypto tax softwares and you can watch that video. So I'll leave a link somewhere here or in the description. And I'm gonna go through some issues that might come up for you and how to resolve those issues. Things that you might just run into in general, how to sort out uh, transactions that are uncategorized, missing prices, all that kind of stuff. Let's get into it. Okay, so why crypto tax calculator? So this is going to be a brief summation of the pros of crypto tax calculator. If you want to skip ahead to the tutorial part, go ahead. I just want to give a quick summation. So firstly, because they have a vast array of exchanges and wallets that are supported, all the mains, main ones that you need are there. You can tag transactions as interest payments, staking, transfers, income, rewards, mining, presents, gifts, like all that needs to be there. And I cannot stress how significant it is when it comes to getting the actual balance of your taxable income. Like being able to correctly tag or classify a transaction is so important. They have advanced filtering. So if something's not equaling out, if there's an uncategorized transaction, if there's just something not right, you can filter through. They have advanced filtering. You can filter through to find the transaction that needs to be fixed. Uh, and I'm gonna go through how to use the advanced filtering and I'm gonna go through how to tag transactions later on in this video. They have configurable tax settings, awesome, and they cover NFTs. I can literally see when I bought an NFT or when I've sold an NFT. They cover DeFi and DEX trading. Sorry, I'm right near a main road, so if you hear beeping in cars, I'm just so sorry, this is nothing I can do to... <laughs> It's really annoying. But anyway, that was the summation of the pros for Crypto Tax Calculator. Okay, so really briefly, these are the supported countries. So if you don't see your country, that sucks. Unfortunately, it's going to be very difficult for you to do uh, your tax through Crypto Tax Calculator. I mean, you probably could, but it'll just be uh, not great since you won't have the currency or everything priced in the currency that needs to be to pay tax. Also, when you sign up, create an account, you're gonna see something like this and it says how to import and read your data. So this is just a really good bird's eye overview, but I'm gonna go through all three of these things, the importing your data, the reconciling transactions and the generating report. So let's get started. Okay, so let's start from the start, which is importing your data. So I've already imported some data earlier. Here's some data I prepared earlier uh, from Kraken using an API. So I'll just quickly run over how I've done that. You'll have the option to, you know, do a uh, CSV upload or an API. I usually just go for the API because uh, it's just a lot easier. Sometimes to get the CSV, you need to contact the exchange or sometimes you need to download, you know, three months at a time of transactions. It can just be super annoying. So I just go with the API. So you would go, here I am in Kraken, my Kraken account. Um, and my key permissions that I've ticked are export data, query funds, open orders, all that kind of stuff. But I'm not gonna um, click deposit funds or withdraw funds. Like that's not necessary. I'm not making trades using this API. I just need my data. So I'm gonna go save or I'm gonna go generate key and it'll give me a key and it'll give me a private key. So I'll import the, the, the key and the private key or the secret, it's also known as the secret into uh, crypto tax calculator and it'll sync all the transactions for me, which is really awesome. Let's go with decentralized wallets now. So say my Avalanche wallet. So let's go and copy and paste my Avalanche address. We're going to add this wallet. So that'll sync my Avalanche wallet. Now, what is really, really great about this is, you know, I don't need to generate a key. I don't need to, 
you know, generate a CSV file. I just, you know, copy and paste my wallet address and it'll automatically get all of my transactions into the system. That's the beauty of having a ledger is you can have all the transactions just ready to go with just the wallet. So that's well and good, but what about wallets that are not or exchanges that are not included here? So let's go with uh, Algorand, a lesser known uh, Ethereum killer. I love Algorand by the way, but we don't have the wallet here. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna use something called stake dot tax. So I'm going to show you guys how to do this. And I'm also going to leave a link in the description below uh, for this website, because this website is awesome. So say you have an Algorand wallet, decentralized wallet, and you want to import that. So you would copy and paste your wallet address and that would generate a CSV file for you. Okay, so it's generated a CSV file. Now, what is really amazing about stake.tax is it enables you to download the CSV with the dimensions specifically for whatever crypto tax software that you're using. So for example, coin tracking, a coin panda, coin ledger, coinly, and crypto tax calculator. So I would click crypto tax calculator. It'll have the exact dimensions that I need and I'll go download. So let's go back to crypto tax calculator and we're going to go manual CSV import and we're going to call this Algorand import CSV. So this is going to take a little bit of time, but yeah, that's how you import wallets that or decentralized wallets that uh, are not already, and I'm sure they will. It's going to take some time. Uh, you know, every week I'm seeing, you know, new blockchains being incorporated into crypto tax calculator, which is really good. But in the meantime, stake.tax is just an awesome uh, tool to use. Okay, so let's go through the next step, which is reviewing your transaction. So this is where I spent majority of my time and you probably will too. Uh, once you've made sure that all of your data is imported, you'll see these like little green synced or imported. That's like the green light that you're good to go. So we're going to go to review transactions now. Crypto Text Calculator does us a nice solid by giving us the items that we need to reconcile. So we're gonna go and click in the left-hand corner and you'll see that I have uh, four categories of issues. So unknown counterparties. So this is where uh, you've transferred between assets, but you haven't imported all your data. So they're like, okay, where did you just send this uh, Bitcoin? Where did you just send this Ethereum? Where is this uh, or these tokens come from. Then you have uncategorized transactions. So this is where uh, the system doesn't know what this transaction is. Is it a staking reward? Is it interest? Is it a transfer? Is it a gift? Okay, so that needs to be classified. And then you have negative balance issues. So this is again, a problem that comes from a lack of imported transactions. So there's missing transactions and the debits and credits uh, not balancing out. That's why you're getting a negative balance issue. Uh, and then al also missing price issues. So this is just where we don't have the price for an NFT for a token. We don't have the correct price or a price at all for a certain asset. Let's go through uh, to uncategorized transactions. I wanna walk you guys through this. And you can see that we've got 480 USDT, which was sent to my Kraken account. So what we can do is we can go advance and say this was a gift. So I'm gonna find gift. This just means you received a gift from a third party or a family member and say that I received that USDT from a family member and I need to classify that. That's how I would do it. So here we go. We have another incoming uh, over 1,500 USDC. Now say this was, it wasn't, but let's say it was an airdrop. I would classify that as an airdrop and that would update the system. Uh, let's say we have, okay, 304, over 304 dot incoming. So let's say that this was me withdrawing uh, my stake. So I would click staking withdrawal and that would update on the system. Uh, we got three dot here. Let's say this was a staking reward. We'll uh, classify that as a staking reward. So you'll go through and classify all these transactions. And as I said before, yes, it is tedious. Yes, it's annoying, but you're gonna get a more accurate picture of your taxable income. Next thing I wanna show you is advanced filtering for your transactions. So what's gonna happen when you go to your dashboard, you wanna make sure that the amount of tokens that you see on your exchange, uh, the prices, the unrealized gains, the cost base is correct. For example, if you see that you've got, you know, $2,000 worth of polka dot, but on your exchange, you're, you have $5,000 worth of polka dot. Well, you're missing transactions. So you need to filter through and you need to find those transactions. When we go back to review transactions, you'll see that we have 
one, two, three, four, five, six ways to filter transactions. So we can filter by warning, we can filter by source. So I can filter all the transactions from Kraken, Algorand, whatever it may be. I can filter by currency. So let's say my Bitcoin isn't adding up. So I'm gonna go Bitcoin and I can go through all of my Bitcoin transactions to make sure that they're correct. When I wanna you know, get rid of a certain filter, I just go reset and apply, which is awesome. I can filter by category. So I can go, okay, I wanna look at all my staking rewards. So I can go apply and I can see all of my staking rewards, uh, you know, from my exchanges, wallets, all that kind of stuff. So also I can filter by date and also I have advanced where I can filter by transaction ID. I can filter from, you know, a certain wallet or to a certain wallet. This is all really, really, really useful. I can get down to the nitty gritty and find those transactions. Okay. So once we've done that, we're going to go get report and they give us a example report. Now, what I really like about these reports is, you know, we have all of the financial years. Uh, so this is the Australian financial years from the 1st of July to the 30th of June. So I can go, okay, I want to look at my previous financial year. I want to look at this financial year and also the, the summary report. So we have report summary, capital gains report. So this is literally uh, you know, when you bought, when you sold your cost base and your gain or your loss. So if we just click the gain or loss, you can see um, it'll like change the dynamic of what it's showing. Uh, so for example, I can see all of my gains and then I can see my losses here. So uh, income report. Now this is like staking. So this is, will show you all the income that you've got from staking or income itself. So if you're getting paid in cryptocurrency and then also we have the derivative trading report. So that's like shorting, longing, um, options, all that kind of stuff. We have the transaction report. So this is all of your transactions. So this is like a pretty long report. And then we have the inventory report, which is your opening balance, uh, your opening cost and your closing balance and your ending cost. So this is a really good way to find things that are just not adding up. And then we have the trading stock report. So this is, you know, what you started with, um, what you acquired, what you got rid of and what you ended up with, which is really good. Also, you can add your accountant to crypto tax calculator. I can't remember how to add, I think it's permissions. Yeah, you'll see permissions. So obviously you have not received any invitations from accountants, but you can add your accountant or your accountant can add you and help you with all of this. My accountant uh, was really great. He already was or had a deal with crypto tax calculator and you know, he's been working with me. So yeah, thanks for watching today's video guys. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, please don't hesitate to smash the like button, uh, subscribe to the channel. I always appreciate the love and I'll see you next time.